Okay, let's take a look at this essay. So we start with our first sentence, and that is a topic sentence. It should have a very broad topic that tells me what the whole paragraph is going to be about. So if this topic is set, if this topic sentence is correct, I'm going to have two different arguments, both of which prove caring. So that's what I'm going to take a look at for. Next, I should have a claim. And a claim should be a more specific reason why I believe she's caring or how she shows she's caring. So she was affectionate to many at Fisherman's Rest. So why do I think she's caring? Because of how she shows affection towards people. So that is a claim. So after that, hopefully I'm going to have some evidence. So when she first walked in, she said, this is a formal quote, not embedded, so you should have a comma there just because this is a formal quote. Let the poor man be and give him some supper. So I do have specific quotes that show caring, that she wants somebody to be given food and she's trying to, to care for him and protect him. And that evidence is cited. So that evidence is in fact supporting the claim. So, she paid for a blind man's food without expecting anything in return. Then, upon seeing them, she rushed over to the Comtesse and Suzanne. Her face lit up with additional brightness, and she stretched out both arms towards them, Orsi. So, here we have more quotes, and here we again have a citation. Now, we do have a little bit of a problem here. These two sentences in between are summarizing what is in the story, which means they should still be cited. You should cite everything, even if it is a summary. So we should have Orsi on each of these, or you can join them together so that you have fewer sentences and then have fewer citations. But overall, does this evidence prove caring? Yes, it shows that she is affectionate to people at Fisherman's Rest, and that is part of caring. So what should we have now? Well, hopefully we're going to have a little bit of commentary. She even stayed placid when the Comtesse was rude to her. If she wasn't so empathetic, she wouldn't would have been impudent to everyone around her, especially the one who disliked her, the Comtesse. She didn't, however, because of the thoughtful woman she is. So this is my commentary. I can tell you immediately that it is contrast commentary because it's setting up. If she wasn't empathetic, she would have been rude. Um, but she's not rude, therefore she is in fact thoughtful. And thoughtful is your word that connects you all the way back up to caring. So that is really nice commentary there. I should now hopefully have a transition into a second argument. More notably, that's my transition, so now I should have a new claim. Marguerite was sensitive to the French nobleman's needs when she encountered Chavalin. So I now have that she is uh, sensitive, which does seem to fit within caring, so we're good. I'm now going to look for evidence. He asked her to help him discover the identity of Scarlet Pimpernel and said that she would be doing her homeland a true service. However, she, a warm-hearted person, did not agree to help Chavalin. So this is actually even better evidence than on the first hand. Every sentence that has either a quote or a summary from the book is cited. And I'm seeing these little phrases that are embedded inside the student's sentence. Instead of having this, she said, and then give me a full quote. Let the, uh, let the poor man be. So the evidence here, does it prove that she is sensitive to the French nobleman's needs? Yeah, because she's saying, no, I'm not going to help you. So that's really nice. At this point, hopefully, I'm now going to have some commentary. So let's see if we have commentary. This shows that her support for the nobles of France isn't feigned. She is like a compassionate person who finds a homeless puppy on the street, takes it in, and cares for it. 
That's how loving she is. So loving takes me back to caring. We now have a comparison. So we've got the person who finds the homeless puppy. Now, this isn't the best comparison because I don't see quite how this is finding a homeless puppy. So I, I would need a little bit more explanation about why is refusing to help Shavalin the same as picking up a homeless puppy. So that's a little bit strange. In fact, this commentary, comparing it to a homeless puppy, would almost seem to fit this first set of evidence better because then I could say, well, the man is homeless, he's hungry, so a little rude to compare him to a puppy, but I could see the comparison. But this comparison is a little bit rough. However, I do see that this is a student that is moving into using different types of commentary and I can see what type of reasoning is being used and I can see that you keep coming back to that idea of thoughtful. And so it's really well tied together proving that she is in fact caring. Now, in closure, what should I have? In closure, I should have a closing transition. To summarize, oops, I pulled the wrong pen. I meant to highlight that. To summarize, not the best closure because it's a little obvious, but it is a closing transition. I should return back to that idea of caring. Marguerite is undoubtedly an incredibly benevolent woman. So I go back to caring and now I need an intensifier word, a mic drop moment that says, yeah, undoubtedly, incredibly. So this has a couple of flaws, um, specifically with some citation up here in the first half and with the commentary being a little off topic. But overall, this is a really, really strong example of a paragraph despite those few flaws. So let me ask you a few questions about it. Question number one, what do you see highlighted in blue? Hopefully you recognize this is in fact evidence and we know it's evidence because it is specific events and quotes that are from the story. What is wrong with the evidence in this first argument? Okay, hopefully you said that there are citations on two of the sentences, but you're missing citations on two additional sentences. So let's see if you can answer some more questions. What do I have highlighted in red? red? That is a transition. And a transition, you should always have a good transition between your first argument, where you have your first claim evidence commentary, and your second argument, your second claim evidence commentary. So that's a really nice transition because it tells me that the relationship is that this argument down here is even more notable, even more important than the argument up here. So it tells me the relationship between these two arguments and that makes it a really good transition. What do I have highlighted in blue? Okay, hopefully you identified that this is your commentary. For it to be good commentary, it is going to have a type of reasoning and it's going to have a return to the topic sentence. So what type of reasoning do we see here? Yep, that is contrast. We've got if she wasn't empathetic, but she is. So here was the result of that. So we've got that traditional setup for the contrast commentary. What word in this section returns to our topic sentence? Yep, that is thoughtful. So good piece of commentary there. Now let's take a look at the closing sentence. You should have three different things in your closing sentence. So let's see if you can identify what they are. What is this? Hopefully you said a closing transition. So um, to summarize in conclusion, uh, in the end, in the final analysis, these are all closing transitions. Next, what are these words? 
Those make the closing more intense than the topic sentence, because after a whole paragraph, you should feel that, that topic sentence even more strongly now. And finally, why do I have to have this word? Benevolent. Benevolent. If you remember, your topic sentence said caring. And benevolent is you going back to what the topic said. You want to return back to that topic sentence. So this is a nicely structured conclusion sentence. So let's take a look at a few things that a lot of you guys struggled with a little bit more. Okay, so let's see if you can identify the parts of a sentence here. I've highlighted to make them easier to see. What do you have highlighted in red? Yep, that is a topic sentence. Now, this topic sentence has a problem. What is the big problem with this topic sentence? Hopefully, you identify that you actually have two different topics in here. But the problem is one paragraph, that little backwards P that teachers always write means paragraph, one paragraph should equal one topic. So for you to set up two topics right up front, that's going to be a problem. But let's see how the student handles it. Let's move on. What do you see in green? Okay, that is a claim. It should be a why or a how. Now, if you notice, this first claim is really short. It goes right straight into the blue section. So, she is cold-hearted and mysterious, regarding her past as supposedly being a traitor. So, that is going to tell me, you know, how she's cold-hearted or mysterious when we see it. So, it's a weak claim because it's not a full sentence, but it is a claim. So, what do you see in blue? Yeah, that's going to be your evidence. And you can see you have a nice embedded piece of evidence. Does that evidence prove cold-hearted, that she's unmoved by, you know, calm tests? Well, yeah, because a cold-hearted person, they don't get emotional. They don't react to other people. Does it prove that she's mysterious? Well, not necessarily. She actually seems to be pretty upfront here. She's just cold hearted. So that evidence does not prove cold hearted or does not prove mysterious, but it does prove cold hearted. So what do you see in yellow? Yellow is the commentary on this first piece of evidence. What type of reasoning do you see here? Uh, because commentary always has a type of reasoning. Okay, if Marguerite weren't so sly. Now, sly, does sly match cold-hearted or mysterious? Sly, faking. Well, these things seem to match to mysterious, but the problem is my evidence is matching to cold-hearted. And so the paragraph is feeling very unfocused. Now, if this commentary were simply redone, to focus on cold-hearted, I would say, well, then we can fix it by just getting rid of mysterious. But because our evidence is matched to one thing and our commentary is matched to another, this first argument is feeling a little bit shakier. Okay, what do you see highlighted in gray? Yep, that's a transition, and it's a great one because it tells me that this argument that's coming up is more crucial or more significant than the argument we've already had. So that's a really nice transition there, and that definitely makes me happy. What do you then see in green right here? Boy, that's hard to see. It's her confusing manipulation of the guests makes her uncharitable. Yes, that is in fact a claim. Now, question, does this claim of uncharitable, does it match cold-hearted or does it match mysterious? Yeah, that matches cold-hearted. So we almost seem to be going back and forth between the two, but uncharitable 
is definitely going to link up to cold hearted. This, the fact that she is confusing, um, that she's manipulating, that she's uncharitable, that tells me why you think she's cold hearted. And so now we seem to be going back to cold hearted. What do you see in blue? And if you notice, the blue is kind of split into two sections. That I am absolutely fine with. So what do you see in blue? Yes, that is evidence. Now, we have that she's dazzling, delicate, chiseled, but she doesn't always appear that way, that she's having a hard set and stone expression on her face. Well, hard set and stone expression seems to prove cold hearted, but then that she doesn't always appear that way seems to connect to mysterious. So you can see we may have to get rid of all of this evidence and then get rid of mysterious in order to get this to be the rule, which is one paragraph equals one topic. But what I do like here is the structure's really clean. They know everything that should be there. And everything does connect to something in the topic sentence. The topic sentence just shouldn't have two different topics to connect to. So what do you have in yellow? Here and here. Yep, that's the commentary. What kind of commentary do you have? Hint. Okay, that is contrast. But we're saying if she were an untroubled guest, well, that would lead me to believe that you're trying to prove that she's a troubled person. But neither of the two traits that are in the topic sentence are troubled. So again, we are sliding off a little bit and, and we just need to focus on the fact that we should have one paragraph be one topic and everything should tie back up. So structurally, this is this actually, is actually great. great. But by having two different traits in the topic sentence, by having both cold hearted and mysterious, it kind of sets the student up for a little bit of a fail um, just because the paragraph keeps going back and forth between which of the traits it's trying to prove. And so in the end, it ends up just being a little bit confusing. So you have to make sure that your topic sentence has one topic because you're only writing one paragraph. Okay, this time I'm gonna let you read and I'm going to let you then answer some questions about this. This paragraph does a lot really well, but it has one major error uh, and that is a missing piece of structure and it's got a couple of smaller errors. So you read and then we will talk it through. Okay, if you need to pause this so that you can read through it, um, but you can also keep playing and we can talk about what I should expect to see structurally. I should see a topic sentence and that topic sentence should have one trait. And that's what I'm gonna focus on. I then should have two different arguments that fit under that topic sentence. So argument one will have a claim, evidence, and commentary. Argument two is going to have also a claim, evidence, and commentary. Between these two, I will have a transition and then I will have a closure sentence at the end. Your paragraph that you're looking at here is missing one of these sentences. So topic, claim, evidence, commentary, transition, claim, evidence, commentary, closure. What is missing? I highlighted it. Can you spot it now? Hopefully what you identified is this is your first argument. More importantly, great transition. It marks where the second argument starts. But what that means is I have a claim, 
When is she being phony? She's being phony in her relationship. I have evidence. What's the evidence? She openly ridicules him, but she doesn't like how strained their relationship is in private. Great, great claim, great evidence. Missing the commentary. So I should have a form of commentary here after this bit of evidence. So that missing commentary on the first argument, that's a big deal. So let's talk about some of the little things. Take a look at that conclusion and you tell me what it's missing. The conclusion does a great job with a closing transition. It goes back to what the topic is, phony, fraud, fake, great. So it is in fact missing the intensifier. So something that makes it feel like that mic drop, mo mic drop moment where you're like, yes, absolutely 100% phony. And so it would be so easy to get it in here. In short, Marguerite is an unforgivable fraud and fake. She is the ultimate fraud. So you need some sort of intensifier word there. Now, we also have a problem, a little problem, maybe not a little problem, not a major problem in this evidence. So what problem do you see in this piece of evidence here in the second argument? Yeah, you're starting a new sentence right here, but if you notice, there's no cite here. You have to cite every sentence that has evidence, whether that evidence is a quote or whether that evidence is summarized. So hopefully you are starting to see where the strengths are in this, in these paragraphs, because I will tell you, you're going to have to write another paragraph and you're going to have to put those two paragraphs together to make your first essay for me. And that's going to be your final. So Hopefully, you're going to be able to rock this.